Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ashes of the Singularity Escalation. Today I'm casting a 2 versus 2 on Gamma Draconis. Our heroes for today, spawning at the bottom left, playing as the blue substrate, Astral Matrix, and his partner in crime, the white substrate, Chronopolize. They will be versing the red PHC, Bradley ATG, and the green substrate creature of existence. So I've casted these guys a couple of times in a row now. Last game we saw Chrono just absolutely wreck face. So he sort of handicapped himself a little bit here. He went for substrate. He's basically only a PHC player. He, he practically never plays substrate. So him going substrate is going to even things out a little bit more. Though it was still a close game last time around. You can also, you can put a handicap on. So for example, Astral Matrix, who's the most inexperienced player, you can give him like extra income, but nobody likes the extra income. It makes them feel guilty. Whenever I've offered, like, hey man, do you want to put the extra income on? They're like, no, 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 I don't, oh, I don't want that. Which I, I, I kind of respect, because if, you, if you're used to playing with that extra income, your build orders and your strategies don't really time out very well. If you then comp you then translate that to them playing normally. Seems Bradley's whiffed his early game a little bit here. He didn't actually capture this early region. He must have sent like one brute and the brute died. Yeah, sending the archers now. He is capping very aggressively, however. Going really deep here with these, these frigates. So... Let's see if he actually puts the pressure on or if he just wants to capture these before the creeps spawn uh, large numbers, because they do increase the amount of... The size of the creeps will increase over time. So the earlier you capture them, the less resistance you have, thus the less frigates you lose. Chronopolize having double assembly here, so this is a great spot to have your forward rally point set up next to the, the cutoff there as well. This map also changed in the 2.75 update. There is now a backwards path to connect the two player bases, so the cutoffs can't be as brutal. Especially if you play in a one versus one, which you can do in this map. There is a two player variant. Going for the world's most forward assembly, the armory rather. So last game, Bradley built the world's most forward armory, but he's actually beaten his own record and now has the world's most forward armory. So see this line here? Th this, this is the middle of the map. And so he is a, just a sliver behind the middle of the map here. So I think that's going to really be a problem for him. He needs to build up one a bit further back. He, he can actually finish it now though, because he has all these these uh, archers. And man, he builds, if he gets an emergency turret, that'd be so sick. Get an emergency turret down, that'll hold the line. Then finish that one off, get a Zeus out, and he'll be okay. It's still so risky though. I don't like having forward, having production that far forward. I'm trying to build a uh, and I'll add a cannon's pretty clever. He may actually lose one of these engineers. No, the archer is able to win the, the frigate battle. Archers are really good in small numbers against other frigates. In large numbers, they overkill ridiculous levels, though. He's actually boosting out of Zeus, too. That's really clever. This is going to be so aggressive. He's, you know, he, he, he goes... That's an emergency turret. Nice work. Does lose one of the engineers, but... This position is really secure. The drone MRV is actually really clever though, because that has a lot of range, so we will be able to just outrange the emergency turret and, and you know, whatever's further behind that to an extent. It's like a, a mini artillery defense. He actually may lose the constructor, though. No, he's pulling back! Okay, drone hive's there. The drone hive's are really powerful. He needs to get an Athena or, or a Nemesis out. Nemesis will one-shot the drone hive, so those are great versus them. Down goes the Zeus. Drone Hive's also pretty good versus building. He's going for an Artemis Cruiser. That won't help him very much. And he needs to get also the Atlas Frigates because those have anti-drone fire power because these drones are the real threat to him right now. You could lose this, this armory. Building another armory. Oh my god. Bradley, he is a man with with courage and bravery. But alas, I think it will be the end, the, the end of him. I think he'll pay for it. Building a third armory slightly further back. I wonder how the left flank is going. Certainly less exciting. We do see Astral Matrix has, you know, a lot of frigates on the map. 
Uh, the problem with Bradley is actually floating a lot of money here because all of his production kept dying Which is what happens when you build it in the middle of the map He hasn't been able to spend his income So he's gonna lose because he just didn't have his production in a safe enough position He couldn't spend his money because he's just wasting money now and that That'll result in him losing territory Chrono getting a stronger income and then just you know, mass producing his opponent. He's actually just churning out drone hives. They're pretty hardcore. He has like six of them. Was this? He's got four, and he's about to have six of them. So, Athena's and Nemesis are definitely needed. He's going for a Zeus, which is, that's an Apollo. That's an Apollo. That's not too bad because it has the anti-drone. But Nemesis are just so good versus drone hives because they one-shot them and they have lots of range as well. Creature, however, trying to rush out of Dreadnought, but without any territory. A little bit too soon for that. A little bit all in there. I mean, he has a couple of amplifiers, but he probably won't get it in time. His income is actually higher than Astral Max's, though. Yeah, Apollo not really in position to keep the, the drones down. Okay, there's, there's finally an Athena now. So now the good times will happen, especially because of the Apollo there. He's going to lose a lot of these drone hives. Nice. Let's board him some time. Bradley only has a single quantum relay. Chrono has none. Wow, he's such an aggressive opener. Didn't even go for a quantum archive. So he can't even build maulers even if he wanted to. So that army gets cleaned up there, but did some damage. But meanwhile... Chrono now has this middle position. He has three metal extractors there. Astral Matrix has double Turinium, so he's got pretty good income. He's actually overtaken... Overtaken Creech because he lost his uh, radioactives. He's actually still building Harpers in his main base. Let's see if he uses the, the boost as well in the overcharge. Overcharge, rather. That would get him that, he'd, would get him that Dreadnought faster. If he gets that out, he could get a lot of damage done, but... I, I actually think that it'll come out, but it'll be too late. Also then, you know, this is a small map, so the Trinium limit isn't that high. Middle is being defended by Chrono. There are Annihilators here, so it's going to be hard to push through this, but what he really needs is to get this radioactive deposits back. Build some Annihilators in front of them would be ideal. Anyone going for any air units? I don't see any air factories. Yeah, this is this has actually been the most action-packed team game I've, I've casted. It just because of this nonsense on the right side. I hope Bradley doesn't push out too far. Bradley also needs more armories because he still doesn't have that much production. Just a single armory, though the boosting engineers are helping. Finally, Chrono now actually has some quantum relays, so he can build more than just drone hives. He's going to go for a flank, though. Wow, he's going for the left side for creature, I think. There are some sky cleansers here, so they will contribute to the drone battle. Drone battles are precisely as fun as it sounds. Oh man. Creature could get collapsed upon though by both of these players. He was able to take out a fair bit of the drone hives though. A lot of tormentors are being built by Chrono, the artillery frigates. They're great in the stalemate situations, which is often what happens in this sort of map. The retributor is almost done, by the way. So, this crazy strategy may work here by Creature, but... Look at the income. Astral Matrix is really high. Creatures is pretty high. Uh, Chrono is pretty high as well. So it, it won't be that far off until Astral has his own uh, Dreadnought. So this this quick retributor has to get a lot done. Artillery posts are being built by Bradley. Arty posts are really good versus the Tormentors because they one-shot them and they have more range. Though upgrading all of these was maybe a little bit too bold. This one, he needs to have like a barrage just so he can't push through. 
And here come the drone hives. The annihilator cannon got taken out. There are more of them though in position, but there's just so many drone hives. There's actually an overmine. So the overmine is completed. That's going to be really powerful here. But we will lose a lot of his income. The triple metal region there with the the uh, amplifier on it. And now he's pulling his army out, so this position is actually exposed. Artillery post though doing great work against these tormentors. Takes out some of the production as well. Here is the overmine. But Astral's Dreadnought is it's about halfway done, so not going to matter, I don't think. Chrono pulling back is smart. Don't want to lose units for the Overmind for free. We'll also give him some experience too. He's going to lose one of these, actually multiple arty posts, because there wasn't a single smarty in position. Even an emergency turret. He's going to lose another one. Oh man. We're getting a couple of kills with those arty posts though. Just needs to call down an emergency turret. Overmind going for the middle of the map. Has a lot of units there for support as well with, by Bradley. This is a strong army. Uh, building a, building a smarty and an emergency turret too. He may lose that one. He needs to repair it with his engineer. You know, that does go down. It is going to be a tough position though, the arty posts. The right side being captured by Cronus. It will be triple income soon. Rampage transition as well by Creature. So he didn't go for a second Dreadnought. Yeah, he went straight for air units. So nice flexible composition. Going for the flanks would be really good with the Rampages though. Don't just go for the middle. Because the Overmind's there anyway. Tribute is going to be done pretty soon. So that's one advantage of this air transition is it will deal well with other Dreadnoughts. He's actually calling in reinforcements too. Once again, using the the nano transport, the very popular ability by uh, creature. Bradley's army is pretty far back. So, if he, that being said, look how many cruisers there are. All of those cruisers combined with the Overmind, combined with the Rampager, and his calling in reinforcements. He can take out this Retributor when it shows up. So long as they're p together, they can't split their armies up. That's the biggest mistake, I think. I don't know why Creature's going for Sky Cleansers, because the Overmind is so good versus Air. He just needs, like, Reapers, I think, would be ideal. But a bit of a battle here. Drone, high Drone Swarm has been called down. I think the Athenas are going to win this fight. There's just so many of them. Even the Zeus Cruisers as well are doing some fantastic damage. They're so clumped up there. Uh, yeah, that was... It was weird how close Astral Matrix got. If he attack moved, they wouldn't have hugged the Zeus Cruisers, which... You, know, you don't want to hug Zeus Cruisers because they have a lightning attack. But now the Overmind's on its own. It's got it's going to get flanked by this army here of Chrono, the Retributor on the side... It was a nice little win there by Bradley, but I don't know. Let's see what the upgrade difference is like. Astral Matrix, the upgrade advantage could turn the tide here. I think the Retributor also wins the fight directly anyway. Um, is there more Rampages on the way? He is building them. Creature still hasn't quite got all of his extractors back. He's working on it. Taking out the production, though, is going to prevent it, Chrono from rebuilding. Retributor though has moved in. Here comes the cruisers as well. Multiple maulers, avengers, destructors. Level 2 overmind. There is nullification there from the mobile nullifier. Eradicator in the back line. Retributor's engaging this overmind. Maulers are doing so much damage. No sign of nano mesh barrier, but there's just so many rampages. There's six of them in the sky. Who will win the fight here? Looks like the overmind is going to be able to use its, its quick repair. Calls in a nullifier, uses the static charge ability as well, so he may be able to win this one. Rampage is actually destroying the base of Chrono, so is he suiciding his Overmind to try and take out the production, take out the income, maybe even the Nexus? There's not a lot of anti-air. I don't see any anti-air being built by Astral. He's too preoccupied. The Rampage, you go straight for the kill here, but now they're returning to engage the Retributor. More units still being called in. 
Destructor. Not really what he wants to try and turn this fight. The Overmind's gonna go down though. He will hit level 2 with the Retributor. Maybe even level 3 from that. Just Destructors. Yeah, so he wants to try and go for the kill, I think. Astro Matrix, he, he has some Blossom launch. Actually, he has a fair bit of Blossom launches. So he may be okay, but not without a teammate. A lot of Harvesters here. So, Creatures Income, it's it's somewhat competitive. But yeah, he's going to take out Chrono with a Rampages. What a what a nice transition. I love that so much. When you go for a, a, quick, a quick Dreadnought, and then your opponent starts building a lot of anti-Dreadnought stuff, a lot of ground units, and then you just... You go for a mass air transition. You can do it b backwards as well. You can go for a, a lot of air units, and then you stop building air units and go straight for dreadnoughts. And then your opponent, they have to scout you. You know, they, they need to send units at your base, see what you're actually building. Because if you're building anti-air against a dreadnought and vice versa, you're going to have a bad time. I think even with this many blossom launchers, it won't matter. You really want to have upgraded air defense. If there was a single starburst or a sky ender, uh... He would be okay here, but Blossom Launches, I mean, they're good, but against that many, I'm not so sure. Especially because the Nexus is kind of exposed. He is going for it, though. He's going to lose a lot of the a lot of the Rampages. Um, taking out the Advanced Assembly would be pretty good as well. Yeah. I actually did, did hold the line, so the Rampages attacking directly into a massive line of anti-air. Wasn't the best thing to do. But now it's uh, it's the top team with the Trinium Income. Only two against one. Creature has... It's actually Astral. Astral has a pretty good army here. Not in, any anti-air, so that's where the Rampages would have been fantastic. Astral still has a Retributor as well. So he has a good army. Creature is just suiciding units one at a time. Bradley doesn't really have much. So, Astral is still in this game. He's going to have a second Dreadnought pretty soon, but more Rampages, not enough anti-air, or not any anti-air. He needs to get some aviaries of his own, uh, start getting some Dominators for the air-to-air -air fighters, maybe just mix in some Sky Cleansers. This one is exposed. This one's pretty exposed as well, the army that is. Yeah. Got to respect those gunships. Even just an, an overmined Dreadnought will have anti-air, so that can be a pretty sturdy way of getting anti-air. It's going to take more regions off of Creature. Bradley has an army, but it's not particularly good against this. Rampage is still taking out this Retributor. It has a lot of armor, you know, 60%. Um... So that's why it's taking so long to take it out. They don't have armor piercing the rampages. That's really where you want to have like the harbingers, even punishes to an extent. Astral Matrix calling the GG. Yeah, he couldn't win the one of you two, but that was a, a really good game actually. It was it was cutthroat. It was down to the wire. It was aggressive. Uh, you know, Chrono had a fantastic game versus Bradley, but C Creature was able to bring it back. The fast Dreadnought was risky, but it worked. The air transition was sick. Astral and, and, and Chrono, unfortunately, not scouting their opponent. Just suiciding pans is a good idea. They're so cheap. So, well played. That's going to wrap up my day of casting. Pretty hungry, actually. You may have heard my stomach rumbling throughout the, the casts. I think the mic's pretty sensitive, so my apologies for that. But, yeah, thanks for watching. My name is Callum McCall. I'm the lead designer for Ashes Escalation and subscribe to the Startup YouTube channel for all Ashes content and announcements.